We'll get started in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, kindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, and instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant that by the same Spirit may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Let the Guadalupe pray for us. Saint Ignatius pray for us. Okay, the second uh, session we want to go through uh, three basic ideas, and it's um, our protocol. Go through our prayer method. Then we want to give you an introduction to what's called principle and foundation. Okay, our protocol, prayer method, and principle and foundation. Our protocol can be compared to a tripod. Tripod. Three uh, principal uh, props or indispensable parts of this program. First is our presentation, which uh, starting next week, it'll just be one presentation rather than two. Uh, the second will be after the presentation uh, next week, you're going to be breaking up into what are called sharing groups, in which you're going to have a facilitator, a trained facilitator, in which each of you, for a couple minutes, will be able to share on one of your meditations how God was able to really speak to you in the course of your meditation. And the third would be your prayer period. So we'll talk about number two now. The heart of the exercise program is the time that you spend with God on a daily basis. Okay, so the the heart of these exercises is is, uh, is uh, your prayer period. So let's talk about that. We want we we want you to give. We want you to try to give an hour. Okay. Uh, the newcomers might feel that that's a lot. Uh, well, maybe it does. Give the Lord the hour. Once you get into the swing of things, you're going to find that it's really not that long. And how much time we spend basically wasting time on activities that are maybe not downright sinful, but very frivolous and very superficial. To be kind. <laughs> We, we waste a lot of time. Now, an hour out of the 24, what is that, 6.5%? I'm not a math major, but something like that. Is 6% of the day. What about the other 94% of the day? So you can't, uh, you're not going to win me in a debate over that. I mean, I'm, hands down, I'm going to win that debate. We can give the hour, okay? So already make the decision now that you're going to give the Lord, give the Lord that time, an hour. The exercises, if you read the Ignatian text, 
of Ignatius Self, annotation number five, he uses the word magnanimity. That's a big college word, okay? Compound Greek word, magna anima. Okay? Magna, any of you know any Greek? Magna means great, anima means soul. Uh, a great, generous soul. Magnanimity. Okay? The opposite would be pusillanimity. Okay, the antonym. Okay. <laughs> so we want to be we want to be generous with God. Okay. Here's the essence of it now. Uh, I I I can I can teach you how to pray. I'm a teacher. I can teach you. At least a piece of cake. I can teach you how to pray. I can, it can go through a lot of different avenues. Teresian prayer, Ignatian prayer, lecture divina, meditation, contemplation, prayer of the church fathers. I mean, I, I can go on and on. I'm a nonstop speaker. I can go on and on and on, okay? As a teacher. But I cannot give you the desire to pray. Sorry. <laughs> you hear me? I can teach you how to pray. And if I were to sit down individually with you, I'd be able to work with all you individually and give you, I, would, I could give you the, the material to pray with. But I can't give you the desire to pray. Sorry, I can't give you that. No? Here's a question. What would you consider to be one of the greatest graces in your life? I say one of one of the greatest graces in my life is that I always like to pray. Even as a child. As a teenager, I walk, I would live in, in New Jersey. I would walk to school when I was a teenager and pray three rosaries walking to school. Wow. And that's huge, no? It was something natural to me. And it's not because they married it, just that I just Always felt this real call to pray. Free time, and then I go to school, and after playing baseball, I was a big athlete when I was in high school. No, I just I like to pray. And even now, it's my favorite topic is trying to get people to pray. If I can get you to pray, I'm going to get you to heaven. So I, I, I can just motivate you, but be, you've got to beg for the desire. St. Augustine says, he who prays well, lives well. He who lives well, dies well. He who dies well, all is well. Amen? Amen. <laughs> it's Augustine, huh? I'm going to learn it in Latin. It'll be real beautiful. No, but it's pretty good in English, huh? He who prays well, lives well. He who lives well, dies well. He who dies well, all is well. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's St. Augustine. He said, Oh Lord, you have made our hearts for thee. Our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. From the confessions, right? St. Augustine. And I like to write. I like to create images. What oxygen is to the soul, what oxygen is to your lungs, prayer is to your soul. Got that? What oxygen is to your, and to your lungs, Prayer is to your soul. <coughs> Eric's has spent a lot of time in the water. No, I, I remember as a kid, I'd be able to swim about an, a minute un, underwater. Pretty good lungs, no? When they come up, man, that was sweet, that air. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> came up, ah, ah. We should even have a greater hunger for prayer than that air that's coming into our lungs, right? <laughs> so as I say, I can teach you how to pray. I can't give you the desire. You got to beg for it. You got to beg for it. Yeah. For example, during uh, last uh, 
Last session we, we went to Yorba Linda on, the, on Thursdays. We were dealing with about 400 people, you know, in, in one session. So we're here, maybe we're about 60 here. We had 400, imagine that, no? We had to do it in the church, no? And I went with Mary and Eric and Lupe Galvan. Any of you know where Yorba Linda is? Yes, I do. Uh, uh, guess what we did when we were in the car? Prayed what? The rosary. Uh-uh, the rosaries. <laughs> we prayed. We prayed the, the luminous, and then the sorrowful, and then the joy, then the glorious, and then the chapel of divine mercy. And we prayed for the Pope. We prayed to the saints, and we pulled right into the parking lot, right? Right, Eric? Garden angel, too. Yeah, garden angel, too. <laughs> so we, we hope that you'll beg for the desire to pray. Because I can't, I can't, I, uh, I can't give you the desire, but I, I can give you the, I can give you the, the tools. No? It's like if I'm, I, I'm standing up to bat, you know, I'm hit the ball. I got to get the bat off my shoulders, right? You're not gonna hit the ball. You're gonna whiff, huh? You got to get it off your shoulders. And you got to swing, hit the ball, huh? So the best way to pray is Teresa Babila says. The best way to learn how to pray is by praying. You hear that? <laughs> St. Teresa of Avila says it. The best way to learn to pray is by praying. You'll learn how to pray by doing it. Hmm? Father. Yes. This is the best one that made me pray good. What's that? Oh, it's a prayer. It's a prayer for the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Best prayer to help you to pray well? Yeah. You know who wrote this? The, I wrote it, okay? <laughs> this is the best one. It's, uh, it's probably one of the best prayers ever written on the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit, we'll get it for you. Free of charge, okay? Yeah. Free of charge. Yeah, I, I've always found, I've always found to, to explain the, the difference between the seven gifts is hard. Because three perfect the intellect, the other perfect the will, and the the one between the two, the linchpin, counsel perfects both the intellect and the will. Now, not easy to understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. No? But if we don't have those gifts, we're not going to become holy. It's called the sanctifier, right? And Aquinas says you have some temptations so impetuous, without the gifts, you're going to fall into mortal sin. Some temptations are so imperious, impetuous, without the gifts, the theological virtues, they work slowly. With the gifts, very quickly. Very quick, the gifts. No? Father, yes. Can I ask a question about prayer? Okay. There is, the, okay, during the gospel and everything, you go, when you pray, yes. you have to be private with the Lord. Yes. That is the most, uh, the most, uh, uh, the benefit as far as praying. Yes. God wants you to be alone with him. Now, because of this, since I was a little girl, we learned this. In my head, I got to go to my bedroom and close the door and put my candle and do my yes. praying because it's not the same as I go walk, I do walk exercise, and sure. then I go pray. It's not the same, though. So sure. Well, what is that? Is that the mentality or psychologically? Yeah, or? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about the place. Yeah, your, your point is very well, well taken, yes. We have to have a place. Um, the ideal place is in front of the Blessed Sacrament, but you may not be able to do that. Okay, the ideal place is you have the Blessed Sacrament, either the tabernacle uh, or you have the monstrance. For example, in St. Martin and Yorba Linda, you've got perpetual adoration. Yeah. Here we have adoration uh, from the 6 o'clock Mass until 8. We got about 14 hours a day. Then last night we had perpetual adoration. Friday we had perpetual adoration. So we're arriving at that point where we want to have perpetual adoration. Uh, but you, you, you may not be able to make it to church because of where you live or because of your work, before, because of your children. But I have an idea. 
We open up our church at 4.45 in the morning. You can come. <laughs> then we got a 6 o'clock mass. Kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Yeah. So you come 4.45 or 5 o'clock. Okay. There you have, you know, the, there's enough room for you in our church at 5 o'clock in the morning. Then right after that, you got the 6 o'clock mass. So we'll see you tomorrow at 4.45, okay? <laughs> okay, now if you can't do that, then playing, praying in your home would be a good idea. But you have to find a place where there's silence. Yeah, there's got to be silence. If you got a lot of noise and you got the phone and TV, it doesn't work. God speaks in silence. Remember the prophet Elijah, speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. In the silent temple, God spoke in silence. God did not speak in the, in the thunder or the storm or the earthquake, but in the gentle breeze. Remember that? So God speaks in silence. So create a spiritual milieu or environment. And I like your idea. You should have you should have an have an image of Mama Mary. Have an image. Do you like the Sacred Heart here? I have full. I mean, I put in my house full of Sacred Heart. Okay, good. So you you're you're. I am supporting Sacred Heart of Jesus. Great. You're not a Jehovah Witness, okay? <laughs> so you got all these beautiful images. Okay, then light a couple of candles. Burn some incense, but not marijuana. <laughs> No, don't do that, no? So some candles, an image of the Blessed Mother, and an image of the Sacred Heart. And you got some incense, and you're creating what is called the spiritual milieu or environment. And then we're going to be giving you, we give you handouts for every day. So you're not going to be doing the Santo Nino or the Novena of... Uh, of St. Anthony, uh, all those are fine, but you're going to be try to follow the rules that we give you. Every day we give you a biblical passage, and every day we give you a, a commentary on that passage. So that usually surfaces in one of the questions, what are we supposed to meditate about? We spell it out for you. And we give you a method. Okay, we give you a method to pray. So Bible passage and commentary. Over the past year or two, I've been really um, captivated by a prayer method that is mentioned by Pope Bent the Sixteenth in his uh, encyclical uh, Verbum Domine, which means the Word of God. And he goes through a, a prayer method that you've probably heard of before. It's called Lectio Divina. Okay, Lectio Divina. And these are the steps he suggests that you can utilize. Uh, and they are lexio, meditatio, contemplatio, uh, oratio, actio. And I've added the next, the last one be transformatio. Should I repeat those? Okay, lexio means you read. Meditatio means you meditate. Contemplatio means you utilize your imagination. Okay, oratio means you talk. Oratio means you talk or you pray. Axio, where you have the word action, you try to put into practice what you meditate. Transformatio means no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It is that the exercises transform us. We can't change ourselves, only God can change us. We can only go from bad to worse if we try to change ourselves without God. We go from bad to worse and worse. But with God's help, we can become great saints. Amen? Amen. Amen. You believe it? Yes. So that's a method. Lexio. Read. 
Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. Meditatio, use. You, you're going to be reading, use your intellect. Those who are entering into the faith, uh, often it's difficult for them to pray because they've got nothing upstairs, except a lot of junk, okay? A lot of rubbish, you no? Know? So if you're being converted, you've got a lot of erroneous ideas, a lot of junk, a lot of impurity, and you've got <laughs> you to get it out. And you don't get it out overnight, no? So you start to read, and you're, instead of those junky, ugly, impure thoughts, you start to put on the mind of Christ. Paul says, put on the mind of Christ. And he says, you have the mind of Christ. And he says, no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. For that reason, Teresa of Avila says, never go to prayer without some material. Never go to prayer, you know, just here I am praying. Uh, go with the Bible. Go with the commentary. Go with the, with the commentary we give to you. So that's what you got. You, you got to read. And then you got you to think. You got to think. Think about these spiritual thoughts. What do they mean? And then contemplatio means... Try to imagine, we all have an imagination, right? Imagination, is it good or bad? It's neutral. Imagination is neither good nor bad. It depends on what we do with our imagination. You know, we can use our imagination for evil things. Hey, okay, you're, you're, you're married and you're imagining being with you know, your ex-boyfriend. That's wrong. It's called adultery. <laughs> happens at times looking at maybe something bad on the internet maybe pornography and you're thinking about that that's that's a sin that's wrong it is imagine getting revenge on someone and you're allowing that to go and trying to plotting how you can get even with this guy that hurt you last night that's wrong the imagination either we use it for good or for bad that's the bad way of using it the good way of using it you try to imagine you're with Jesus you're with Mary. You're with St. Joseph. You're with the Holy Family. That's using your imagination well, right? You're using it well. But face it, unless someone teaches you the importance of using your imagination and contemplation, you're never going to learn. If you don't come to this course, you're not going to learn. So we're, being, we're, we're training our imagination for good. We want, to bring, we want to bring God and His light and the Holy Spirit into our minds. And from the, from the, the contemplatio, you move to oratio. What some of the saints say is the biggest distance is going from your mind to your heart. That's one of the biggest distances, going from the mind to your heart. You start upstairs. We start, we start up here. But you have to arrive down here. And that's the very essence of prayer is in your heart. Yeah. It's in your heart. That's the essence of prayer. And then once your heart is touched, your heart is touched, then Orashu, you open up and you talk to God. You talk to God. Talk to Him in your own words. Talk to God. God is, God is never too busy for us, but we're sometimes too busy for God. How ironic, huh? <laughs> we're too busy, we got our own schedule, yeah? We got our own agenda, huh? We're too busy for God. You know, we got, we're really important. You know, we, 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 we'll try to get God into our schedule. We'll squeeze Him in a little bit, no? Oh, sad, no? Try to God, get God in, in a little bit, and we'll then get rid of Him until tomorrow, no? A lot of people are like that. God should be the very center of our lives. Okay, an example of all this is your first meditation tomorrow. 
We're going to be giving you a principle and foundation. We're going to be giving you a first meditation. would be Exodus chapter 3, which is Moses before the burning bush. The vocation of Moses. Moses before the burning bush. What happened is, Moses before the burning bush, you actually be... You actually become Moses. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> wow. It is divine mercy. That's good. It's a mercy hour. Okay, good. Well, I like that, no? Okay. Good. Huh? For the sake of his sorrowful, have mercy on us in the whole world. Very good, yeah. We'll have to maybe pray a little bit later because I have to finish my lecture, okay? <laughs> every Sunday how her prayer life is. Well, good. You might just turn it off on Sunday with us. Here, I know, okay? I forgot. Okay, good. I forgot I had it on. Where was I? Let's see. Okay. Okay, yes. Okay, you're, you're, you're Moses. So, drawn close to the burning bush. And as he gets, draws close to the burning bush, here is a voice... Take off your sandal because you're on holy ground. And he takes off his sandals and he sees this bush that's it's burning but it's not being consumed. And he draws closer. And as you draw close, that bush is turned into the sacred heart of Jesus. And Jesus says, Come to me, all of you are weary, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I'm meek and humble of heart. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And he says, come closer. And you end up by resting on the sacred heart of Jesus. You're resting on the sacred heart of Jesus. And that fire is symbolic of his great love for you. And you hear not the name Moses, but your own name, and you hear Jesus saying, I love you. You heard that many times, but it was always up here. For the first time in your life, you're convinced in your heart that God is love and he really loves you. And you rest on that. You rest on that. And before you know it, a half hour has passed, you're resting on the burning bush, which is the sacred heart of Jesus, and you get up and you're no longer the same person. You're at peace. Because you know that Jesus is your best friend and he's never going to abandon you. That's an example, my friends. That's an example. I give you an example of all those different steps, but the essence was you're aware that Christ loved you, you're aware of how much he loves you, and you open up your heart, and you just rest on his heart. If you're firmly convinced of how much God loves you, your life, your life changes. You're not always living with so much insecurity and fears and phobias and nervousness. Because you recognize God loves you. And then you, then you finish that, and you just write down in your notebook for two minutes. I, I, I was Moses, and it was not so much a burning bush, but it was the sacred heart of Jesus that was inviting me to rest on his heart. And I never felt closer to Jesus in my whole life during that holy hour. Now I know he's not simply kind of a distant, ethereal statue, but he's alive. Jesus is alive. So what a blessing to be able to do these exercises. Right? What, a, what, a, what a blessing. I mean, you know, God, God really loves you, but he wants you to love him back. He loves you, but he wants you to love him back. I love a two-way street. You know, we, he loves us, but we've got to correspond to his love for us.
Now, friends, this is going to be the best month in your life. It's going to be the best 10 weeks in your life. It's going to be. You're entering into retreat now. A 10-week retreat. Retreat means you're giving yourself to God. He's going to give himself to you. Okay, so then let's just conclude with this third point, Principle and Foundation. We're going to be giving the Ignatian text of Principle and Foundation. That's the, that's the, 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 the foundation of this program. So we'll go through it briefly, then you'll be able to, every day you're going to be reading through, it's about 100 words. And the te- Ignatius tells us why we're here. Okay, this is the purpose of our existence. This would be the most philosophical part of the exercise. It's not a course in philosophy. I don't want to scare you away. But we all have a, you know, we all have a philosophy of life. Most people have the wrong philosophy, right? But this is the philosophy that we're going to be meditating upon, embracing, and trying to live out. And it's this. You were created by God to praise God. Your first duty is to praise God. You're going to be doing it for all eternity in heaven, but get in the habit of praising God even now. You're here to praise God. You're here to reverence God. We go together. Then if you're praising God and reverence God, the next is you're here to serve God. If you're praising God, you're reverencing God, it's almost natural that you're going to be serving God. Then if you do that, the net result is this. Salvation of your soul. You're here to praise God, to reverence God, to serve God, and to save your soul. My friends, when all is said and done, the only thing that really matters in life is to get to heaven. Right? What really matters in this life is to get to heaven. The only thing that matters. We're here to get to heaven. That's why Ignatius, when he was going after Francis Xavier, repeating the biblical phrase of Jesus, what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That's, that's Jesus to Ignatius. Uh, that's what Ignatius said to Francis Xavier. What would it profit a man if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? Say, for example, you become a multi-billionaire and you've got houses all over the world. You die in the state of mortal sin, you lost it. You lost it. I mean, you're a multi-billionaire, you got a house in the Philippines, and Australia, and Beverly Hills, and you know, you die, you, you, you lose it all. It goes to the American government. It's lost. Whereas you don't have a, you don't have a, 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 wood, a wooden nickel you die in the state of grace, heaven. you go to heaven. This is the principle and foundation. Let's relate th- this to the most used and most widely interpreted word in the, in the Ameri- in English language. It's love. What is the definition of love according to Thomas Aquinas? Love is willing the good of the other. It's St. Thomas. You hear that? Love, love is willing the good of the other. What, okay, what is the greatest good? The salvation of your soul. Yeah. You love your daughter, you're going to do all you possibly get that daughter into heaven. Tell her, don't go to that university, you're going to lose your soul there. Just stay, stay local. Really? It's true. <laughs> you go to you go to you go to university it's far away. You're gonna lose you're gonna lose your faith. Then you lose your soul. Stick around. 
And you go to some of these weird universities, but you can come to St. Peter's Snow, you can kind of filter it out with, you know. It's loving your daughter. They're going to get angry at you, but, well, you know, she gets angry. You're not called to be her friend. You're called to be the mother to get her to heaven. Amen? Amen. Most mothers and fathers love their children on a human way, but not a supernatural way. Face it, don't, don't get angry at me, but it's true. Most moms, they love their children on a natural way. But supernaturally, a D minus on a good day. Really. Really, I mean, that, that, that's, that's life. No? Tell you beautiful stories. Uh, about five years ago, my father had, it was like a heart attack. No, my mom did? Right away, you no, know she did? She first called the priest and then paramedics. Amen. I like that. First the priest. Well, because she, she, she wanted my dad to get to heaven. Paramedics, first, I want to make sure he receives those three sacraments. You're going to die? Okay, he's ready. I've never heard anyone do that except my mother. Never. Yeah. I've never heard anyone do that except them. There's a woman of deep faith, right? But right away, she goes, okay, it looks like he's pretty serious. Call. Thanks be to God, it wasn't. He's going to die three years later. But if he's going to die, I want him to receive the anointing of the sick, confession, and communion. That was in her mind. That's called, that's called principle and foundation of a wife loving her husband. Happened to be my father. So this principle and foundation is going to influence the way you think. Your decision making. And then your actions. And then, you know, your, your, your personality. And then your destiny. <coughs> so your thoughts, your feelings, your decisions, your actions, your actions, and then your virtues or vices, and then your personality. Personality means who you are as a person. And then your ultimate destiny, which is heaven. So principle and foundation is... I, I've been teaching this for decades now. I, I, I never get tired of talking about this, this principle. Because if I, if I can get you to pray, understand principle and foundation, you're going to get to heaven. Right, Eric, Mary? If we, can turn you, we can teach you how to pray, and you're, you're imbued, permeated, with the whole idea of principle and foundation. Your actions are this. Okay, is this going to help me to get to heaven? Is this going to help my daughter get to heaven? Yes, I'm going to do it. Is this going to block her highway to heaven? Okay, I'm going to fight with her, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to oppose her will because that could jeopardize her salvation. You're always thinking, how can this get my daughter and my son to heaven? You hear me? Really? Myself as a priest, I'm always thinking, what are the best tools I can use to get as many people to heaven as possible? Every day. Every day. Okay, what are the tools I can use to get people to heaven? And I'm keenly aware of the fact that I'm getting older. You are too, right? Are you getting older? Yes. Are you a year older than last year? Yeah, you don't want to admit it, but you are, right? None of us, none of us are getting any younger, right? You know, I thought about this. If I live to be 80, I've lived already, uh, I've, I've lived a good 75% of my life. I'm closer to the other deck. Yeah. I have 80. Well, you're 80, no? I mean, maybe you'll live to be 110, only, only God knows. No? But life is so short. And that's, that's what principle and founder, it teaches us life is so short, not to waste our lives. Not to waste our lives, give our lives to God. There are two places to rest in this world, the cemetery and heaven. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> A two places to rest, the cemetery in heaven. I really believe this. Let's, my friend, let's work hard in this life and rest forever in heaven. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Work hard in this life. And life is short. Augustine says our life in comparison with eternity is a blink of the eye.
just blinked, you know. Our life in comparison to eternity is a mere blink of the eye or a snap. So if you're doing the exercises well, you, okay, all of your actions are going to be motivated to praise God and to get to heaven and to bring as many people to heaven as possible. Amen? Amen. How many parents here? Any parents have children? Do you want to get your, you want to get your kids to heaven? Do you? Really? So that, that should be that should be your desire. Okay, you can offer up this program for your child, for your family. Okay, the the holy hour that you're struggling through, you're kind of bored and tired. Offer it up for your for the conversion of your family. Who knows? Maybe because you're struggling through a holy hour, maybe God allows your struggle for the conversion of your daughter, or your son. I mean, if we want to save people, we got to suffer, right? Right, Lucia? we got to suffer. How did Jesus save us? By suffering, right? Yeah. I, I love Prince One Foundation. I mean, it's so clear. And, and I, as I said earlier, we all have, everyone has a philosophy of life. And most people have false philosophies. Right? Materialism, right? Hedonism. Satanism, rationalism, moral relativism. I mean, I could go on. I, I have a degree in the, uh, philosophy. I could talk, talk to you about the false philosophies of, of life. But ours is, you're here to praise God, reverence God, serve God, save your soul. There you have it. Maybe you remember the, the Baltimore Catechism. You're probably the, the same epic that I was brought up and raised in. We're here to know God, love God, serve God in this life, to be happy in heaven, right? It's the same thing. You have that in the Philippines, in the Baltimore Catechism? No. Here to know God, love God, serve God in this life, and be happy with God forever in heaven. It's really the same thing. And the second part of Principle and Foundation is this. It's called the, the law of tantum quantum. There's Latin for you. Law of tantum quantum is you, you use all created reality as a means to arrive at your final end. Okay? You, re, you use all the created reality as a means to arrive at your, at your final end. So everything in creation is good. Either we use it for the honor and glory of God, or sometimes we abuse it. Either we use it to honor and glory of God, or we abuse it. So everything that God created is good. However, we can easily abuse it. Everything is good. Okay. Is food good? Yeah. What happens if after this class you go out the five of you go out to McDonald's and you all eat five hamburgers apiece with french fries and three milkshakes. That's not good for you. Okay. Nothing, there's nothing wrong with the hamburgers, but you're giving in to gluttony. You're eating too much. No? So the sin is not in the hamburgers, but in the people that are eating the hamburgers. Okay. And you're going, you're going overboard, huh? You can drive your car in the 605 North. You're going east, uh, You're going south. Nothing wrong with the freeway. You're going the wrong direction, no? <laughs> so y proper use of creation. You can. I can give you tons of examples. Call to use, not abuse. <coughs> and the last point of principle and foundation is it's called holy indifference. So those who have done the exercise, I think you remember what that is. Holy indifference is you want to do God's will. Despite what it is, you want to do God's will. And you don't want to prefer a long life to a short life. No. Health over sickness. Riches over poverty. Wow. 
Honors over humiliations. <laughs> but you want to choose what is most conducive for the end for what you're created, which is full circle, the honor and glory of God and the salvation of your soul. That's called holy indifference. Holy indifference, la santa indifferencia. So there we have it. So we're embarking upon a very important moment in your life. I really hope and pray that these next 10 weeks are going to be the best 10 weeks in your lives. And uh, starting tonight, I've got, a, I've got my third Mass in about an hour and a half. Uh, I am going to offer a novena for all of you. So I'm going to offer a novena for all of you. So novena means nine. So starting today, every day for nine days, and every one of my Masses is a secondary intention. I'm going to be placing all of you on the altar so that all of you will become great saints. Amen? Amen. That will be my intention, and I believe God's going to hear my prayer. Amen? Amen? So let's say Hail Mary and place these exercises in the hands and heart of the Blessed Mother. Okay? Can we do that? Yes. Hail Mary, Hail full Mary. of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners. And Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So God bless you and have a great exercise period, okay?